particular question in Mission 7 were stuck on. No, this is actually Mission 7. How do you find the um, you know, how do you find the acceleration you start with? <coughs> yeah, second derivative, right? So R is x naught cosine omega naught t. Why not sine omega naught t? So v will be the R dt, right? And a will be the v dt or the second. And um, let's see here, so V would be what? Yeah, you change all right? So I get minus omega naught x naught sine omega naught t minus, oh, you're not supposed to minus, but uh, plus omega naught y naught uh, cosine omega naught t. Differentiate again, what do you get? Right? We can 
what? It's minus m omega naught square x naught goes minus omega naught t. Now, did you get that? trying to solve minus m omega naught squared x is equal to minus du dx. It's not even du. It's partial du partial x, right? And minus m omega naught squared y is equal to minus partial u partial y. I have to solve these equations to find out what my potential energy function is. Personally, just erase these minuses. <coughs> and just integrate both equations, right? The first equation, when I integrate this, tells me that u is something like what? Like 1 half m omega naught squared x squared plus some constant, which possibly depends on y. <coughs> the second equation, when I integrate both sides here, I get u is equal to 1 half m omega naught squared plus some other constant c2 which possibly depends on x. And then I just combine them. I get a potential energy. Now I can have a constant, right? In principle here. Some constant. But I'm also told that what? I'm told that u of 0, 0 is supposed to be 0. So it tells me that u naught should be chosen to be zero. And that's the, uh, I think I have, um, I've just solved part B for you. My apologies. <coughs> <laughs> so past that point, they ask you questions about total energy. <coughs> yeah. Um, why, why do we not just combine
And so then the question is that this is going to be equal to minus partial u partial x, comma minus partial u partial y. Then what is y? What is what is the potential energy function? What's the u? Well, that amounts to solving these two equations. Okay. So we'll integrate both sides for x here, and integrate both sides with respect to y here. We get this in this perspective, and then we can combine these two to suggest this answer. Now, at the end of all this, whether I'm right or wrong is ultimately judged by if I take the gradient of this, and then I multiply by minus, by minus, you know, do I get back to the, the force which we derive? And you, you, you'll figure, I mean, if you try, you'll find out we do. In fact, we do. So, okay, with all of that said, what's the total energy function here for this problem? energy is there so and then, then he asks you questions about the total energy of the particle when x is equal to x naught and y is equal to zero and, and so forth and so on function of time, right? You're not given time. I mean, I'm, you're not wrong. Um, <coughs> so we, we had what? Um, so d is equal to dx dy, right? The, the x component, the y component. Um, you can argue if x is equal to x naught, what's the velocity? Think about this. some time at which the cosine is maxed out, right? What happens to sine? You know, the sine in general is what y is equal to y naught cosine sine omega t, right? Right, that has to be equal to zero. If you think about cosine, cosine looks like this, sine looks like that, right? So when you're up here, you're down there. How about dy dt? you, 
is this particular value for x and y. I can think about it for a little bit. I can figure out that the velocity is actually zero in the x direction. And it's in fact maxed out. It's maxed out to omega naught y naught in the y direction. That's not immediately obvious, but you can reason it out. Right? And then that makes the kinetic energy one half mv squared just equal to one half m omega naught squared y naught squared. So then you have to add this guy and that guy together to get the energy. And I think similar reasoning is needed for the last part. I have now spent entirely too long on this problem. Are there other questions? I mean, I like this problem. Kind of unusual. I guess I might as well let this up because I just showed you all the answers. Except the last one. By the way, we're not having class Friday. I'm not going to announce this by email. Damn. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no voice. You the camera. You can tell those people who left. Or we can just let them Please discover it for them. themselves Friday. Uh, yes. I think we should let them discover it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. We should tell them that you're doing a surprise quiz. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like Bailey did. I can't uh, think of a lot of things that we have to do. We can't be trusted that much. We have a lot of things. We have a chain. We should do it now. So oh. <laughs> so what do we have last? Yes, there's a lamb. I'm going to remind you about that. Hey, if it's snows tomorrow, we won't have lab anyway. There's a Thursday lab, boy. There is a Thursday lab. Yeah, it's snowing on Thursday lab. Snow for Thursday lab? Well, we can hope. We can hope. Okay, so three events. The spring is a con that when when the block is being pushed without friction along the surface, it's a conservative force that's governing the motion. When it's going up the slope, it's still under the conservative force of gravity. Everything here, there's no way to lose energy in this system at that point, okay? Which means we can use energy conservation to solve this problem. I mean, please use energy conservation to solve the problem. So basically, my point here is energy one <coughs> is equal to the energy at time two is equal to the energy at time three. If 
question then is how to characterize those energies, that's all. Energy one is just equal to one half kx squared. Where that's, I mean, the compression, right? Right before it, it right before it springs, when it's maximum compression, it's not, it's not moving, right? It starts to rest. Pushed against the spring, blah, 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 compressing at 1.8 meters, right? And then the block is released. In other words, you stretch the spring and then let it go. So your initial kinetic energy is zero. It's all potential energy from the spring. So 1 half kx squared. And k and x are given, so we can put in numbers here, right? So that's 1 half my k, my spring constant. I'm going to resist the urge to um, calculate the x-rays again. Um, E2. Well, E2 is 1 half energy not squared, right? There's no potential energy due to gravity. By the way, potential energy due to gravity, 0. Potential energy due to gravity here, still 0, right? So. At E2, all of the energy is kinetic, right? <laughs> so, by the way, we can solve for V not rest for that. That's part A, right? What's the speed of the block as it flies along the horizontal surface descending by the spring? That's V not. That's V not, right? So we can solve for V not. It says that V not cancel the half, right? You get 590. The number that matters is the method. I hope you guys realize that. Yeah. When they say how far does the travel, does the object travel up the incline? Are they talking about the vertical distance or <laughs> total like distance? <laughs> how far does the object travel up the incline? Which then you just divide that down. I say that's the horizontal distance. Not yeah. the horizontal. It makes more sense. Yeah, I, I think it's the the, the distance. Okay. I, I, I want to say it's that's along the uh, surface of the. I think it's the hypotenuse. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's uh, the vertical distance. Usually they'll say vertical distance if they want vertical distance. Anyway, we got two choices. We'll find out soon. So, energy at three. See, Vf is what? Or V3 if you like. V3 is equal to zero by assumption. That's the highest point right before it starts sliding back down, right? So the energy at three is, is just all potential energy due to gravity. So what you got is mgh, right? And so mgh, that tells me then that h is equal to, what was the, what was the energy, by the way, did you guys find it for me? trigonometry for the rest. So we've got this incline, we've got 37 degrees here. We just found that this distance here is 0 0.4887 meters. The thing we're asked for is this distance. That's, that's the, I'll make it blue here. Tangent, no, I don't want tangent. That's a, exactly the wrong choice. 
Anything but hand is good. Fine. Yeah. Fine. It makes the problem more interesting. Abstractions? Yeah, abstractions. Yeah. Put a little rough patch like in here. Explosions of gas. Exploding gas. Yeah. Also a good option. I'll take it. So a non-conservative force means you're taking energy or adding energy from the small system. You know, the thing is, wherever two or three students are gathered together, this problem is gotten right. Um, I mean, if you don't get these multiple choice questions right with your friends, you're like. <laughs> we got 15 choices, right? Right. Well, yeah, you, yeah, you don't need to be friends, that's right. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, you're like, well, they can't just, if I only have, if I only have four multiple choice questions, then. I mean, if they only have four tries and it's multiple, four, and it's like multiple choice, then just by multiple choice, they can't just get it right by guessing. But well, that's true, unless there are more people. But if there's like three students doing this homework at the same time, then all of a sudden you're too long. <laughs> anyway, this is true. This is David. I don't know where it is. <laughs> No way tied in such practices. <laughs> Just saying. Okay, so if the marble marble moves along the x-axis, the potential energy function is shown. Okay, so here's potential energy function. So it's very simple. Basically, wherever there's a min or a max for the potential energy function, you have what's called a equilibrium, right? Equilibrium point. It can be a stable equilibrium or an unstable equilibrium. Unstable. Um, would be like up here because, um, you know, if you, uh, you know, basically the thing is nature seeks out the lowest energy possible. So if you just move a little bit to the side one way or the other, v, you're going to tend to go this way or that way, right? Here, if you get a little nudge off that equilibrium, um, the potential energy, uh, the force ends up bringing you back this way again. So, I mean, to be more specific mathematically, um, <coughs> To be more specific mathematically, the force is equal to what? It's equal to minus du dx for this kind of problem, right? So what that says then, there's two things it says. You want to understand this kind of problem intuitively. It says that f um, pushes what? Right where u is what? Decreasing. minus says that the force is pointing to the left. Conversely, if, if, if the potential energy function is decreasing, that means the u dx is negative, but minus the minus gives you a plus, which show, goes to show you that the force is going to the right. Okay, so that, that's what the deal is with the underlying force. So think about then that, that the, the point is here. If, if I'm a little bit to the, I'm a little bit to the left here, right, my function's decreasing. Right, the potential energy function is decreasing. What direction does the force go to the left of the point B? Which is to the right, right? If you're a little bit to the right of the point B, your function, your force pushes left, right? Correct. So as you displace a little bit from here one way or the other, the force brings you back to that 
unstable equilibrium. And contrast at the point D, if you're a little bit off the mountain, then the force just keeps pushing you away from the uh, equilibrium point. So that's why D is an unstable equilibrium, whereas B is a stable equilibrium. Whatever these questions are asking, you can figure that out. So don't look at the answers. Think through. Close your eyes. Avert your eyes. Uh, did you ask a question about a specific one here before I keep blathering on? I'm, I'm looking for one with friction to solve for you guys. Um, these math ones are actually pretty easy. Yeah. Um, are we going to be working, say, on the exam on, on uh, problems that have an unconservative force <coughs> other than friction? Um, possibly, I suppose. Uh, um, I guess my real question is, have we worked on, on things that are like that? Don't, that yeah, yeah. I mean, I made up some silly. We talked about line integration, right? So if I just make up some integrate integral, and I say something like f is equal to, um, you know, y plus x, um, comma y, for example. Um, I, I think this is not conservative. So if you calculated the work done along different paths, you get different different works. So if I had this C1, the nut wouldn't be necessarily equal to the integral along a different path, C2. Because part of this force is not conservative, like this gadget right here, this, this piece is not conservative as it goes out. These two guys I could actually get with a potential energy function, much like the one we did with the study class. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not sure your question makes sense. <laughs> Just um, <laughs> all you gotta do is write. I did at some point. I did at some. I, I have a, at like two points. I have completely changed my organizational structure, uh, and those are times of great chaos. <laughs> but I've been on the same sort of folder structure for a while now, so I, I more or less know where everything is. But I got too far back, I get confused because I had a different organization mm -hmm. before. Um,
Studying that turns out to reveal the true nature of the four forces as we understand them currently. That's the force. Freedom to add a constant. It doesn't seem like that should be that significant, right? But which, it is. Which way is determined to be positive x and negative x? Um, negative x compression. Well, I don't really care um, for this one because I'm squaring it. But, um, but for like part b. Oh. force needed to stretch it away. And so that's the force that's on the spring. The, the force needed to stretch it away would be in the right oh, direction. So yeah, it, would be, yeah. it would be a positive. Yeah, you're right. You're right. right. I'm, I'm the, now, what you've got there is the you're right. force on the system. You're, you're absolutely right. So the spring force would be this way. But the, um, supposing Number eight, how should you think about number eight? Force is applied to a, you know, 
model car. Here's your graph of the torques versus axis. You're supposed to find the speed of the car. Right. We, we proved that the network uh, is equal to the integral from A to B. So that goes back to dx, right? But that's also equal to the change in kinetic energy from, from going from A to B, right? So if I want to know, you know, if, I, if they tell me how fast it's going at the start, do they? Ah, model car is initially at rest. That tells me the velocity here is zero. And so the area under the graph increases, right? The area from, say, 0 to 3 is whatever it is, but you can figure it out without knowing the formula because you've got a triangle and a square, you can add areas, right? Okay. Stop that. So that means you can figure out the area, which is the integral, but it's also equal to the change in kinetic energy. So like the area under that will be 1 half mv squared. They gave you a Exactly that part of the problem is that was brings to something slightly more. There you go. Initial speed, V naught. Final speed, V naught is equal to zero. Um, what's going on here? Y minus, because the friction is going opposite the direction of motion, right? And I don't really, I mean, the line integral just boils down to multiplication of force times distance in this case, because the force is constant in always opposite the direction of motion. So that's, that's what that simplifies to. Kinetic energy is what, though? That's um, 1 half m the final velocity squared minus 1 half m the initial velocity squared. The final velocity is 0. And so we've got minus one half mv dot squared equals minus mu mg delta x. It was bothering me that they didn't give me for mass, but oh. I guess you shouldn't ask the lady what her mass is. So. <laughs> um, anyway, it cancels. <coughs> and we get what? Delta x equal to. Do 
f squared divided by 2 times coefficient of friction times t. We're given all those things in part c. So 4.95 meters per second squared divided by twice. I say this is, this is, this is going to devolve into a discussion about that cursed graph. Thing. <laughs>